Smoke billows up from the burning slopes in BC's southern interior, while on the ground people anxiously look on. These fires burning in this area were ignited by lightning earlier this week and were whipped up by winds and hot weather. Tense, very tense. I, I, I think everyone is fearful for what could come. Oh, yeah, look at that straight in the middle, Jim. Greg Davies and his son Jalen moved into this area a few weeks ago and were terrified by what they saw last night. It was a raging inferno, crazy. We had so much wind, even standing in this actual area. You know, you could feel the, the sand blowing against you. It was crazy. Just after midnight, they got a text message telling them they were on evacuation alert. You can go to bed for another hour or two at least. It's just... It's on your mind, like you get the knock of the door and you have to be gone in your house like that. Fires are becoming an expected and devastating part of the summer season. Last year in BC, tens of thousands were forced from their homes and more than 300 buildings were destroyed when fires raged across the province. But it wasn't last summer that Nicole Heeman was thinking of as she stood taking these photos of the area currently burning near Peachland. Uh, it actually brought back a lot of memories of the Fort Mac fire because that's where I was two years ago. I was part of that. And so seeing those flames brought the memories back and just hoping that they won't get closer to town. The good news is that today in the Okanagan, the weather actually helped the fire fight. It was humid and not as hot as it has been, but things aren't looking good for next week. And then starting Monday, it's going to get hot and dry again. So we're really taking advantage of these next couple days to action it hard, throw the crews at it, throw lots of water on it, and try to get some gains on our containment. Before conditions could cause these fires to grow even more and ignite new ones. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Vancouver. Now let's bring in CBC meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff to talk about what exactly comes next. Because Joe, you know, there are the short-term forecasts, but we both know how volatile this sort of situation can really be. You're right, Andrew. In fact, uh, tonight, even though temperatures are lower, humidity is higher, winds are still very gusty. In fact, over the next couple of days, we'll see some strong winds for the southern interior. But the direction they're blowing at is actually pushing the fire back in on itself, the opposite direction that fanned those flames in the first place. So for now, that's some good news. But we are seeing rapidly changing conditions within the valleys and mountains. So you're right, things can still change very quickly. And so what, what if we look a little longer term, Joe, uh, you know, uh, the rest of the summer? Because it's hard to forget how bad things got last year. It's true, and I'm seeing a very similar pattern, Andrew. As Briar mentioned, we're getting into another heat wave uh, beginning Sunday into Monday, and this is our new normal. Building heat waves that last a week or more, very hot, very dry conditions, followed by dry lightning that sweeps through, lightning that actually doesn't come with any precipitation because it evaporates before it hits that hot and dry ground. So we'll watch for that as we head into the end of the week, probably followed by another hot and dry period. We'll probably see this pattern right through to the fall. And again, this is a similar setup to what we saw last year and uh, a bit of a new normal moving forward. Okay, thanks, Joe.